Okay, um, Holly's just come through to us and said, I've got a lovely lineup of engines, do you want to film it? And we've gone, yeah, but we don't know where we're going to put this in a video or anything. So um, here it is. Um, this engine, uh, Holly's just uh, finished building up. It's a 3.5 engine, standard cylinder heads with a Piper 270 camshaft. It's going into an E-type and we've supplied the carburetor kit as well. The customer's reusing his original ignition system. Um, it's all of his original covers and ancillaries, uh, which Holly has cleaned and painted and uh, etc. cetera. Um, so that's now built up. Um, moving over two engines. Oh, wow. Uh. Yeah, mind that thing behind you, don't trip over. I'll try. Um, this one is also a 3.5 liter engine uh, for a Rover P6. So it's having the original twin SU carburetors. We've supplied a full ignition system, 3.5 standard heads, Piper Torque Max camshaft. And again, it's the customer's original covers and auxiliaries. So both of these engines, we received the exchange engines. We stripped them down, uh, clean everything, make sure we're happy with um, the condition of what we're bolting back to the engine, the cleanliness inside of it. And then Holly's painting them up um, to make them look like this. I think this guy actually painted some of his ancillaries and pulleys himself, um, which obviously we're open to as well. The key thing for us is cleanliness and that things haven't been sandblasted that we normally wouldn't, like timing covers with little oil ways in, etc. So that sort of thing. So yeah, that's off into a Rover P6. This engine featured in our last workshop update video um, was just a short engine. So now it's got its stage one cylinder heads on, um, it's 270 camshaft and um, is built up as a long engine. We have now received the exchange engine for this one. Um, it's from a 3.5 uh, classic Range Rover. So we are now in the process of stripping that down and then um, cleaning all of the parts and getting them bolted on. So uh, maybe if we find the time to film it, we could actually film the engine before we strip it down, film the bits mm. off of it, and do a little bit of a, a feature as part of this workshop update video. Which maybe we've done, maybe not. You'll find out in this video. Yeah, it depends whether you remember in the new year, hey? Yeah. Um, so we will uh, definitely, I would say, be coming back to the workshop video, uh, workshop area, engine bay area. One of them. Yeah, well, let's not reshoot this. Let's go with it. Um, in this workshop update, because we will see this engine fully assembled and um, hopefully we'll have found the time to film the in-between bit to get it from this stage from, um, I'm going to say it, from this stage. Okay, and in the blink of an eye, Holly has already got rocker covers and the carburetor kit on the engine. And sat next to it is the original 1988 uh, 3.5 flapper fuel injected engine from the Range Rover Classic. So um, obviously the customer's opted to um, remove fuel injection and fit the Edelbrock carburetor, which is a great choice when we're talking about flapper injection systems, uh, certainly for his part of the world as well, where you know it's harder to get parts, etc. And, and being able to just use a spanner and a screwdriver on the fuel, inject fuel system is far better. So everything from here forward on this engine is going to get taken off, cleaned up. Um, new oil pump gears, of course, new water pump. Um, we then need to just discuss with the customer whether we're going to be painting the water pump and timing cover red to match the block and heads or go for silver um, to give that sort of contrast between the two and the, and the black pulleys. Um, so um, we'll get this stripped down. We'll show all these parts off the engine. Um, and I think what we'll also do as well is we'll pop the rocker covers off this engine and the intake manifold so we can have a little bit of a, a look inside just to see its story. Um, because certainly on the outside, the 30 plus years of grime, um, yeah, Range Rover style. Okay, so Holly's got everything stripped off the exchange engine and laid out on these tables. Down this end of the tables, um, we've got fairly basic parts, pulleys, alternator and starter. Obviously, um, it depends on what the customer specified, but these will either get cleaned up, uh, starter motor painted, etc., or replaced with new ones. Um, pulleys, etc., cleaned, inspected, painted. Moving on to more interesting bits, the sump. Um, obviously, externally, will get cleaned down and painted to look nice, but the more important thing, and what we really care about, is the internal condition, and that's uh, definitely going to want some holly attention. So that will not go anywhere near the new engine, other than the approximate one metre that it is at the moment, um, without being thoroughly cleaned down inside, and, um, well, basically enough so we can eat our dinners off it, although we won't be, because then we'll have to clean it again. 
Um, moving down further down the table, uh, we've got some more bracketry, which obviously will get cleaned up and painted, original temperature sensor, um, and then the timing cover, which houses that all-important oil pump. Um, the oil pump base will get reconditioned and the oil pump gears will be replaced. Only after Holly has inspected the timing cover, though, so once the oil pump base is removed, Holly will, Holly will check the internal condition of the chamber where the gears go in. Uh, the oil pump and uh, then assuming everything's okay in there it will go on. We've then got uh, obviously the camshaft gear that drives the distributor um, and finally an oil filler cap which I imagine next time we see it won't be orange. So you're calling this an oh by the way bit? Yep. Okay oh by the way um, this is the exchange engine so 3.5 litre uh, 1988 um, I think maybe the heads have been off and cleaned at, at one point. We're certainly seeing a cleaner condition above the head gasket. Um, still lots of uh, carbon deposits and just den general dirt and grime inside the valve area. Um, obviously the rubber washers that were used for inlet valve guide seals have well passed their uh, sell-by date and disappeared probably in that sump we viewed earlier on. Um, camshaft wear, yep, it's definitely got that. Um, we can see browning on the centre of all the lobes. Um, and I think what we'll actually probably do is, is just pop some of these lifters off to show them. Um, maybe even have a look at the head gaskets. Um, so, yeah, this is general condition of an engine that's probably covered 100,000 miles, but we've seen them like this much earlier, much later. All depends on the maintenance schedule it's had or not had. Um, Looks a bit different, doesn't it? A little bit. So, um, all the components are now ready to be bolted back to the engine. So we'll start at one end and move away along. We've got dipstick and tube, we've got idler tensioner, we've got dizzy clamp, we've got power steering pump with bracket, we've got front crank pulley, water pump pulley, engine mounts, uh, alternator bracket, alternator adjuster, engine hoisting point, uh, the one-way vacuum valve for the brake servo, strainer, all cleaned out, lovely. So there's no contamination or anything there. Sump. Modified for the 4.6 throw of the crankshaft. Alternator, oil filler cap, nicely polished up. Do you want me to stop we, we, picking we things up? We could see it until you picked it up, yeah. yeah. Starter motor, and then the timing cover and water pump. Um, now, I'm going to pick this up because obviously it's nice and clean inside, but Holly has pre-warned me not to turn it all the way over because some of the bolts will fall out. But obviously that's where we are now. Now, you'll notice grease on the end of the uh, shaft for the oil pump drive there. So... Brand new oil pump gears, reconditioned oil pump base, and obviously Holly's pre-primed that with uh, grease um, in there, ready for when the engine first fires up, um, which I believe will be on our test bed. So, next section of this video, because I'm now going to stop rambling, will be all of this on the engine. Uh, missed a bit, that bit. And there we have it then. Everything's bolted to the engine, so Holly's double-checked everything as it's going back on the engine. Um, he has primed the oil pump housing down there um, with grease and the engine oilways have all been primed with oil as well as he's finished assembly. So all that leaves for us now to do is bolt this in our engine test bed, pop the coil on here, connect our amplifier to the uh, distributor, fuel to the carburetor and uh, it will make these noises. Here we are on the engine test bed then. Um, just to recap, 4.6 bottom end, Piper 270 camshaft, stage one cylinder heads, customers cover and covers and ancillaries from his original 3.5. Um, was originally flapper injection, so Holly's bolted on the yellow block carburetor and intake manifold, auto kick downs ready in place for his auto gearbox. Um, RPI full ignition kit along the new distributor. Sounds good other than the exhaust rattle going out the door, I reckon. Yes. Ship it out to the customer. <laughs>